This is a 15.6 carat chunk of Cooper PD Opal that I bought on eBay in 2015. I don't recall what I paid for it, but back then, I highly doubt that I paid more than $200. So why do you occasionally see expensive Opal on eBay, for example, for sale at a fraction of its value? Well, well, it all has to do with the seller. Are they stupid? No, they're just ignorant. I mean, we're all ignorant in different ways, right? Take Sheila. Forget that. Take me. Am I ignorant? Of course I am. I know about Opal, but I know almost nothing about anything else. And for God's sakes, don't let me fly a 737 or make a grilled cheese sandwich. I'm just saying, the people who sell great Opal for the price of gummy worms are ignorant for sure, but worse, they are lazy. No, it's not like when your father was a kid and the only way he could find out about something was by asking your smart Uncle Hubert or just comb through the World Book Encyclopedia. And if you couldn't find it there, there was the library. That dreaded library. Today, anybody can learn about anything very easily. It's called the Internet. Now, the online Opal market is screwy, but you should be able to tell if your Opal is worth $100 or over $1,000, right? Maybe, but I think you can get a good enough idea to not sell the Virgin Rainbow for 77 bucks. So basically, it all comes down to ignorance and laziness. And as Einstein once determined, I plus L equals S. And the S stands for stupidity. Does that make sense? Now, this beautiful 15.6 carat opal chunk is what we call semi-crystal opal. But what the heck is semi-crystal opal? When it comes down to clarity and beauty, there are basically three types of opal. White opal, semi-crystal opal, and crystal opal. White opal has an opaque background, and although they may be color throughout, you can only see the color that's on the surface because it's opaque. So there's not much color there. Since you can't see into it, you can't see the color particles that are deeper than the surface. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, crystal opal has a perfectly clear, transparent background. So you can see the colors all the way through at all levels, so it's usually very colorful. So now what is semi-crystal? I know you're going to guess that it's somewhere between white opal and crystal opal. Well, give yourself a gold star. Semi-crystal opal is opal in which the background is not perfectly clear, but you can at least see color at different levels, and the overall appearance is really nice. So where do you draw the line? Where does white opal end and semi-crystal begin? My rule of thumb is that if it's not transparent, but it looks good, it's probably best classified as semi-crystal opal. Now, you can debate the borderline between semi-crystal and white opal, but to me, white opal is mostly opaque and nobody is going to say, well, fella, that's a great opal you've got there. That's a pretty soft criterion, but I'm sticking with it. Now, the surface of this 15-carat semi-crystal opal is natural. It's just the way it came out of the mine. It's not been ground or shaped in any way. And I like the natural look, so I'm not going to make a cabochon out of it. I'm just going to have it put in a bezel mount setting, and I think it will look great as it is. Natural looking. And by the way, natural is cool. Or so they tell me. In my now famous video, The Birth of Opal, I not only show you why all of Australia's opal formed in a single day, 23 million years ago, but I also revealed the world's first specimens of bubble opal. We found them in Tucson with the help of my now famous paraboloptic transcorpuscular bubbleometer, which is now housed in the Smithsonian Institute's Museum of Natural Opal History in Washington, D.C. Now, bubble opals are beautiful for sure, and Sheila even liked them because she liked the way they danced around. Now, the bubbles inside the bubble opals back then were mostly whitish, like miniature ghost heads or something. But it was postulated that there might be a rare variant of bubble opals still out there that no one has ever seen. And the hard work of the Pulitzer Opal Expeditionary Mining Project in Ethiopia has finally paid off. Today, I'm proud to reveal the world's first ever black bubble opal. So what is black bubble opal? Well, it's opal with what appears to be an internal bubble that is dark in color. 
Now, as you might have expected, there have been claims that the black bubble opals are remnants of an extraterrestrial settlement in Ethiopia. Black bubble opal is just a variant of regular bubble opal, but it may be an extinct ancestor of today's bubble opal. I'm holding a bunch of Ethiopian opals, regular stuff, and black bubble opal. Let me sort them out. Now here I've put the regular opals on the left and the black bubble opals on the right. Let's get started with this stuff. This one has a lot of sand on the surface, but I can see into it a little bit, and I'm pretty sure there's a black bubble inside. Maybe you could have seen it had I used my torch, but I didn't. After I do some grinding, though, we'll all be able to see it, I think, and we won't need no stinking torch. This is an eyeball from one of those aliens. And this would not have happened had they just stopped dancing. But really, this is a black bubble opal. As with many of them, there are concentric rings, and at the center is a black rounded structure that is basically the heart of the black bubble opal. Often, there's just a black ball that appears to be floating within lighter opal. The concentric rings in bubble opal are a great example of the so-called Lisa Gong phenomenon which was first described by a chemist who noticed ring formation when certain chemicals were mixed. In nature, the Lisagong phenomenon is seen in a variety of settings, but the one you're probably most familiar with is the rings that occur in agate. This is Botswana agate, which has great ring formation, the best I personally have ever seen. Now, the color is not as good as more colorful agates, but the rings, Dr. Lisagong would have passed out cold when he saw them. Now, this Mexican crazy lace agate also has ring formation. The colors are much nicer than the Botswana, but the rings are good, but not quite as good. And now it's time to meet your black bubble opal team. I've given them numbers, but later they may get real names. They look good, and several of them have great target or Lisa Gong patterns. Now, I spent about five hours working on these, grinding and polishing, and for those who really want to see it all... I'm sorry, you're just going to have to get used to disappointment. But I was just too curious about the target patterns, so I decided to cut the top off of one of them. I expected to see the target patterns all the way through. But surprise, surprise, the target disappeared. After only one slice, what was left was a solid black ball with either red or green play of color, depending on the angle of view. I believe that you can only see the target patterns at the surface because over millions of years, minerals were absorbed that accentuate the rings that are probably there throughout. I'm sure that you remember Wendell and Wyatt from my last video, right? I didn't make a cabochon like I usually do, so I'm going to do that now. As with all opal cabochons, finding the best area to use is super important because you need to avoid any sand and also cracks, as well as making sure that the most colorful areas are shown. The first thing that I'm going to do is to slice the sand off of the edges of both of these. Then, I believe that I will be able to slice off the edge of Wendell in order to remove that crack. It's important not to have a crack in the middle of your stone. Sheila, turn on the saw! Now they both look clean, and Wendell, the one on the left, looks like a perfect place to start making a cabochon. Now I just have to take a thin piece off of one edge to get this thing started.
And now for the final stones. Bright on the outside, but creepy on the inside, is Lamont. He's bright, in more ways than one, and readily takes a shine to the ladies when he's not being creepy. Kimosabi has gained a bit of notoriety as one of the first black bubble opals ever. He loves the bright glow of his corona, and so do the ladies. Francis is a frisky opal who can face two directions at once. She's also a musical talent and plays both the accordion and the kazoo at the same time. Carla was named after her father, who continues to amuse and inspire her. She wants to be just like him as a park ranger in Ethiopia. She's a lively opal for sure. Now, Sybil is a mystery opal. She has the nicest Lisa Gong face, but, but she is the world's only recognized white black bubble opal. Wendell has never looked better. He flaunts his amazing color, which can be seen front and back, and top to bottom, he longs to travel with his brother Wyatt as soon as Wyatt has his body worked on, if you know what I mean. And finally, there's Daniel. He's a 15-carat chunk of natural semi-crystal opal who's looking forward to his new golden underwear. He can party with the best of them, but he never lets you forget about his humble roots. And now for the winners from last time. The winner of the 10.30 carat arahat is... Zzz. And the winner of Rupert, the 28.74 carat chunk of Louisiana opal is... Gregor V. Well, it took a while, but I finally got this one done, and I should be on track for the next one. And I will see you then.